Good day, Broncos. Today is Friday, September the 9th. Welcome to the first broadcast of BNN for this school year. On today's show, find out where you can spend your lunch if you get too many tardies. And remember playing Pokemon as a child? Find out how they've taken the game from the couch to the streets with Pokemon Go. Finally, let's catch up with our freshman and sophomore Broncos playing on the varsity football team. Hi, I'm Keegan Hayes and with me is Jessica Miner and we're your anchors for this year's broadcast of BNN. Welcome back to school Broncos. We hope you're adjusting well and that your first few weeks have gone smoothly. What's it like being a senior now, Jessica? Oh, this new year is my favorite year, especially since I have senior early release. It's so nice. Yeah, and speaking of the new year, a big change of this year is the addition of lunch detention. I spent some time with assistant principal Mr. Critchfield to learn more about how this change could affect your lunch time. With summer over and school back in session, our time outside of class has already been shortened. With school practice and work piling up, we hardly have any time in our day for anything else, including detentions. Uh, I think the change from after school to lunch this year is um, it's a really good idea because uh, students, like they have, they have sports, they have jobs, um, they have tutoring, all that kind of stuff that should be more important than that. This year, the school decided to move tardy detentions from after school to lunch and it'll be hosted in room A210. Um, it's primarily for tardies, um, but it's really up to administrator discretion. After school detention still does exist, and that'll probably be used a lot more for disciplinary things, mm -hmm. um, messing around in class, you know, not being where you're supposed to be, those kind of things, giving the teacher a hard time. Um, but the, the lunch detention can be used for either. Um, my feeling though is it'll be mostly for these tardies that mm -hmm. people continually get. Um, I think that the detention change, like the time change, is better because uh, school, the school day is long enough and we don't need to stay after. Though it might be more convenient to have detention during lunch instead of after school, I know I'd prefer to have lunch with my friends. Remember Broncos, be on time so you can enjoy your lunch. Keegan Hayes, BNN. So Keegan, would you rather spend your detentions during lunch or after school? I didn't like going after school last year, so I'd rather prefer to get, do lunch. And right. Life can be challenging and there are twists and turns around every corner. McKinney ISD is working hard to find more ways to aid students by adding impact counselors to each high school campus. Former academic counselor, Ms. Shelton, is the new role here on campus. Reporter Katie White explores this new position and how the impact counselor is here to help students. If you thought all your counselor does is change your schedule and get you into college, think again. This year, Boyd introduces Ms. Sandy Shelton as a new impact counselor. With this being a new position, there is a lot of confusion about what this job is and its purpose. The role of an impact counselor was added to all three McKinney High Schools this year. Due to the demands of other counselors' jobs, students would often be turned away. An impact counselor fills the role of an additional outlet for students to express their feelings. The goal is for us to make an impact on the student and the, and the school as a community. In light of recent tragedy here at Boyd, we can already see the positive changes this role is creating. Um, I didn't have any idea that we were going to have a crisis the first week of school, but as it turned out, our academic counselors were able to continue doing what they needed to do for kids who did need um, schedule changes and whatnot, and I was able to devote full time to um, working with the needs of students and teachers who were in, in grief. With Ms. Shelton's new position, students formerly in her alphabet will have a familiar face to go to. Coach Hayes is their new counselor. She is excited to be in this new job and is also very appreciative of the new job Ms. Shelton is in. I think it's awesome. Um, I think Ms. Shelton is definitely the right person for that position. She's got the biggest ha heart out of anyone on this campus. Um, she's amazing and so to have that position, I think it's, it's definitely needed. Our world today, it's got so much going on that we need another set of ears. Um, and another shoulder for kids to lean on. And so for Ms. Shelton to have that position, it's, she's perfect. Students, if you need someone to talk to, don't be afraid to reach out to Ms. Shelton. She's here to help. Katie White, BNN. With tragedy striking McKinney Boyd so early on, Ms. Shelton, along with other counselors, are here to help you. Meet the Teacher Night is Monday, September the 12th, from 5.30 to 7 in the evening. Parents have the opportunity to explore Boyd and its learning environment as well as visit with your teachers and other staff members regarding this new school year. Students should print out a copy of their schedule from Hack to help their parents and find their classes. If your parents can't make it to meet the teacher night, not to worry. Many of our teachers incorporate social media to communicate with their students about assignments, grades, and due dates. 
as well as brag about impressive accomplishments. Reporter Josh Woods brings you the story. With the school year getting into full swing, students are all flocking to social media to keep in touch despite heavy class loads. Social media has many wide-ranging applications and different people use social media for different reasons. Uh, I like to use Twitter and Instagram. I use Twitter because it just seems to, like today, that's what most people use, most people our age anyway. It seems like the adults and parents use, seem to use Facebook, whereas the younger people use Twitter. This year, however, students are the only ones utilizing social media. Many of our fine Bronco educators have started to use social media inside and outside of the classroom. So how do you use social media to aid you in the classroom? I use it mostly to communicate with my students and their parents. Uh, it's a lot easier sometimes than sending out emails because you can be short, sweet, and to the point, and everyone is always on their phone checking their social media. And then I also use it, I love to brag about my students. That's my chance to show off the stars that I have in my class and their really good work. I think that Edmodo is a very good social media to help remind you of all your responsibilities, especially for school. Uh, especially when we have multiple classes, it's kind of hard to remember everything, so using Edmodo or other social media like that helps out a lot. As you can see, people of all ages can find a productive use for social media, especially here at McKinney Boyd High School. Hope you all have a great school year. Josh Wood, BNN. So Jessica, do your teachers use social media to communicate with you? Um, actually, no. My teachers haven't used it for me. Speaking of social media, producer Patrick Rushing and I take to the halls of Boyd to find out what apps our Broncos like best in the first ever Bronco Biz. Let's take a look. Hey there Broncos, welcome to the first edition of the Bronco Biz. Today we're going to take a look at social media and what apps our Broncos prefer. Social media is a huge part of our lives as high school students. We use it to tweet about the night out or post a picture of our new dog or send a video of our birthday party to our Snapchat story. Even teachers use it to communicate with their students or just to keep in touch. What apps do our Broncos prefer? Let's go and find out. All right, this is Michaela White. And uh, Michaela, what's your favorite social media app? I'm going to say Instagram. Wow. Hey, what's your name? Darren Mint. What is your favorite social media app? Snapchat. Duh. Duh. OK, all right, guys. So let me get your names real quick. Quinn. OK. Olivia. Rock and roll. So what are your favorite social media apps, guys? Um, I like Twitter and Snapchat. I like Snapchat. All right. What's your name? Rain. What's your favorite social media app? Twitter. You can just scroll through it. Simple. Well, guys, what are your favorite social media apps? Um, I prefer Twitter. Okay. I would have to go with Snapchat. What's your name? Colin Rule Kiefer. What's your favorite social media app? Uh, Snapchat. What's your name? My name's Pearson. Uh, I'm 14 years old, and I'm a freshman. Okay. What's your favorite social media app? Uh, it's Twitter. My Twitter handle is... And let me get your name right here. Uh, Nathaniel. All right, Nathaniel, what's your favorite social media app? Snapchat. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. All right, and now you. Uh, Facebook. <laughs> Isn't that nice? I'd say Instagram. Twitter. Uh, Twitter. David. David. Twitter. Snapchat. All right, all right, what's your name? Bradley. Nice to meet you, Bradley. What's your favorite social media app? Twitter. Twitter. And Jamie Burns, what's your favorite social media app? Twitter. Okay, cool. And Lindsay? Snapchat. <laughs> awesome. Did you expect Twitter to be the winner of the social media poll? Um, Patrick and I going into it knew it was going to be either between Twitter or Snapchat, so yeah, Twitter was pretty expected. And another popular app that takes Broncos back to their childhood, Pokemon Go, was released this past July and has more subscribers than Twitter. Reporter Darius Hart explores this phenomenon that is Pokemon Go to see what all the fuss is about. Pokemon Go became an overnight sensation this summer. It's definitely the game of the year with over 100 million downloads in just two and a half months. There are currently more Pokemon Go users than Twitter users, but what effect is it having on the users? Yeah, I definitely have like a morning, just like walk around my neighborhood, go to a park type thing in my schedule now. Pokemon Go players range in age from as little as three years old to as old as 50 years old. They head outside on a regular basis trying to catch these pocket monsters. I would be going out more with a lot of friends too, you know, battling Pokemon and exploring the world. I can even say with my busy and hectic lifestyle that I find myself playing Pokemon up to four hours a day. It's an addiction, but it's worth it. Darius Hart, being in. Oh look, there goes one right now. So Keegan, did you ever download the Pokemon Go app? Yeah, I did, and the first Pokemon I actually caught was Squirtle. Nice. Next up is sports with Josie Cowley. 
This fall, you will also hear her, along with Thomas Zorn, broadcasting Bronco football for all home games live on NFHS Network. Thanks, Keegan and Jessica. The third week of school is coming to an end, but for our Boyd sports teams, it's just the beginning. From football to volleyball to tennis and cross country, our Broncos are paving the way for their 2016 seasons. The Lady Bronco volleyball team will continue to serve up the competition in the 6-6A district here at Boyd against Denton Geyer tonight at 7 o'clock. As volleyball continues to keep their number three rank in the state of Texas, tennis will also continue to make their mark as they face Plano West here at home on the 13th. Along with tennis and volleyball being in full swing, so has our Bronco football team. Currently 0-2, the Broncos will travel to face the Farmers at 7.30 tonight at Louisville Goldsmith Stadium in Louisville. As it is only the third game of the season for our Broncos, there are a lot of new faces to the gridiron this year. Thomas Zorn and I sat down with some underclassmen of the varsity football team to get to know them. Hi, we're here with Connor, Nate, Chris, Brent, Clay, and Cameron, all underclassmen on the varsity football team. So before we get started, tell us a little bit about yourselves. My name's Connor Garris, sophomore offensive lineman. My name is Nate Jackson, sophomore cornerback. I'm Chris Bush, sophomore defensive lineman. I'm Brett Massick, sophomore outside linebacker. My name is Clay Wyatt, freshman safety. My name is Cameron Maddox, inside linebacker. Right, so what was it like to make varsity at a young age? I mean, it was difficult because you're going against people that are 18, 19, 17 years old, perhaps the grown man, and you're just a little boy coming in there. <laughs> well, you know, it's just, it just hard because it's different than middle school, different expectations. It's, it's really just hard for me because, like, you got to sharpen your ass, you got to lay that wood on because they be trying to run the ball a lot outside and scramble with the quarterback. And you know how fast they are, so you got to lay the wood. And what does it mean to represent your school on the highest level of varsity, being, being it the most competitive? You know, you just got to keep the culture alive. You know, do what we do, play, win. Just keep it, keep it right. You got to build that NCAA mentality. You got to set the tone from the beginning of the game to the end of it. It's a big honor. I mean, playing at that level, it's crazy. So how does the future look like for Bronco football? Future? We're bringing that state championship to, to McKinney Boyd. <laughs> Well, you know, we're going to be ranked number one, you know what I'm saying? We're going to be out here. Look out for us, McKinney boy. And, like, when we get there in the future, I'm going to look back on everybody that doubted us. We're going to say, MTH, baby. Mm -hmm. Put it out. Yeah, you know, the last game of the season against McKinney High, you know, that's already dubbed. You know, no, so. no, we mm -hmm. beat McKinney High. Yeah, so that's what's happening in the future. Yo, uh, you already know, we're going to get that state championship. We're about to do it. MTH. We're going to get some rings. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's all for today. Thanks again for coming in. I'm Josie Cowley. And I'm Thomas Zorn. Be in it. Jessica, are you going to the game tonight? Yes, I'm going to be at the game there with Red Nation. So, Broncos, if you're headed out this weekend to do something fun, you might want to take an umbrella. Here's Darius Hart with the wonderful weekend weather report. Thanks, Keegan and Jessica. And hello, Broncos. I'm Darius Hart, your weatherman for this year's BNN broadcast, bringing you the wonderful weekend weather report. It's going to be stormy, warm weekend starting today with isolated thunderstorms and a low of 74 and a high of 94. Saturday continues with thunderstorms during the morning with a high of 87 and a low of 68. And your day will end with a cloudy evening. Sunday starts off again with cloudy weather and a 20% chance of rain and a high of 88. Thanks for watching and enjoy your weekend. Back to you, Keegan and Jessica. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to follow us on Facebook and YouTube at Bronco News Network and on Twitter and Snapchat at Boyd underscore BNN. News is always stampeding through the halls at Boyd, and BNN has it covered. Have a great weekend.